I designed this character in just two days and it's all because I used just one technique to make my design process 10 times faster. Surprisingly, it's a technique that I recently stumbled upon, which is kind of wild because I am a concept artist who has worked on over five indie games. And you would think with my experience, I would have figured this out by now. But no, your girl has been a slow designer this entire time. Anyways, today I'm sharing with y'all my magical 10x speed character design technique that's going to save you weeks of work. And I'm going to show you all how it's done by designing this character from scratch. So I call this technique pre-gaming like you gotta stick up your butt. And I call it that because you really do gotta be anal about it so that you can save a crap ton of time. This technique has four steps, but I promise it's easy and straightforward. Okay, so step one, the creativity shortcut. This is probably the biggest problem I had when designing characters because most of the times my characters would turn out boring and not be creative whatsoever. They would be like your basic sci-fi or fantasy character that you could probably find a similar design on ArtStation generated by AI. And uh, as a character designer, this is probably the worst mistake that you can make not making a creative design. So this first step is very crucial, but it's still simple. What you wanna do is you wanna brainstorm a unique combo that when you search on Google, nothing shows up. So for this character, I decided to go with Cowboy Sand Surfers, but let me give you some ideas that will help tickle your creative brain for you. Fruity Pastel Goth HVAC Techs, Animal Print Lava Plumbers, 80s Fitness Witch Stockbroker, Wait, that one's actually pretty good because I heard that witches don't like capitalism. <laughs> you can even take this up a notch and limit the design to a single reference. Like what the artist Rhino Tuna does when he designs his own characters, he picks one reference and makes a character out of it. And for my design, I decided to use a dermoid cyst. Now it's kind of gross, so I'm not going to show y'all what it looks like, but if you're curious, you can look it up or let me just describe it to you, okay? So picture a pink blob with veins showing, and then on the inside, there's hair, teeth, and maybe an eyeball. That's a dermoid cyst. <laughs> Moving on to step two, the character dictionary. I am notorious for not going into detail on who my character is that I am designing. And obviously to my detriment, because you can only go so far with a character design if they have no bio. And most of the time, my characters would end up in Boringville because they had no bio. And there's a reason why I call this step the character dictionary. And that's because if you suck at coming up with a character bio, like me, this is for you and to also help you save time. I personally would so much rather make up the character bio after I make the character design or while I'm making the character design. But this ends up slowing down your design process to a crawl. And it's probably the worst thing you can do for your character design. Hesitation and no direction, you know where that leads you? That's right, Boringville. So when I say dictionary, it should be quick and easy to understand. So you want to imagine your character is in this dictionary and you are just briefly describing who they are. You don't have to do much detail, just enough to where you get the basic gist of who this character is. And if you're someone who enjoys making a five page essay for your characters, you're a freaking psycho. Can you please help me with my character bios? <clears throat> you can make a bio that is longer than what I'm going to show you. Just keep in mind that the more time you spend ironing out your character's bio that do not impact your character design, it is kind of wasted time and we are going for speed here. So what exactly do I put as my character's dictionary definition? And I actually only need to know five things in order to have a good definition for my character. So number one, the character's sex or gender. Number two, their build stature. Number three, their ethnicity. Number four, their occupation, if they have any. And five, their personality, but keep it brief. If you have those five things in your character bio, you should be Gucci flip flops. Okay, now on to step three, the one groom gallery. One of my earliest mistakes when I was a young artist designing characters was collecting the wrong reference images. And this caused most of my characters a one-way trip to Boingville. And for a good reason too, because they lacked character and originality. But how does reference impact character and originality? Let me explain with an example, like adding pasta to sauce. Say I have this nice chunky bolognese sauce that I just made and I decide I'm gonna throw in these cute little bow ties with the sauce. 
But this is a mistake. What I did wrong here was not account for how the sauce sticks to the pasta. I thought pasta was pasta, but no, this is wrong. Those cute bow ties won't be able to hold the thickness, the juiciness of the bolognese sauce. It will make the dish taste subpar. You have to pair a bolognese sauce with the perfect companion, like rigatoni. If you're using the wrong pasta with your sauce, it won't taste as good as it should. And the same thing can be said about reference images for a character design. If you use the wrong ones or the wrong combination, your character design will look subpar. Now, you may ask yourself, how in the world can reference images be wrong, Janelle? A good question, I'm glad you asked. Reference images are wrong for two reasons. One, you collected them incorrectly, and two, you're using them incorrectly. Now, you may be naively thinking that there is no wrong way to collect reference images. And I'm not even talking about AI images as reference, okay? What I'm talking about is that you either have too many or too little reference images, or you legit have no idea how to collect good references. So let me show you. Collecting good references is easy because you completed your character dictionary description. So all you need to do is first collect art style reference. For my character, I'm going the realism route. So here are some realism reference images. You also need to collect references that fit your unique combo. So I found some stuff for cowboys and surfers. And I also want my character to have a little punk feel to kind of match her chaotic personality. So there's references for that. And lastly, because I'm using a main image for the overall design, there are some references for dermoid cysts that I'm not gonna show you so that you don't scar your eyeballs with. Next, you wanna find some references for your character's ethnicity and sex or gender. And lastly, this is optional but recommended if you struggle with anatomy and that's finding references for your character's build stature. And sometimes you can't find the reference you're looking for, so just taking a picture for yourself to use that's probably your best option. A quick tip to scouring the internet and not running into AI images, you can type in editorial or runway after your search term and you'll get more actual photos rather than AI images. And you'll also get some creative takes on it, which is pretty nice. Now, as I said, too many or too little references is bad, but when it comes to collecting them, always go for excess. And this is because it is easier to delete images than to go back and search for more. Now, when I'm collecting and sorting my reference images, I like to use this app called VizRev. It is amazing. And while I'm collecting, I like to organize them into different little sections so that they're all categorized. Now, when these are separated, I then like to drag different parts into a new little group that will be my main character inspiration and reference. You can then delete the images or just scooch them far off so that they don't distract you when you're designing. Now on to the last step, step number four, the first is worst is sketch. If you've seen my past videos, you've probably already heard of a first is worst is sketch, but pretty much in a nutshell, it is just your first sketch of your character that's really bad and it's just a starting point for you to jump off of. But as I said before, how the references you use can be done wrong, just like using the wrong pasta. Assuming you've already collected some good references, it should be easy for you to use your references correctly. But let me tell you what not to do. First of all, do not rely heavily on your art style reference. If you do that, it's another one way ticket to Boringville, okay? Just don't say I didn't warn you. Secondly, don't just use your references that look the coolest. As much as we are all going for coolness for all of our character designs, practicality and character building is the most important part of a character design. Whatever you do, do not sacrifice either of those for coolness. That's just gonna lead you another trip to Boringville. And lastly, do not rely on a single reference for multiple parts of your design. That's another trip to Boringville one reference for one part of your design. Unless it's the big inspiration behind your design like my dermoid cyst, but make sure it's done creatively. Okay, if you never do those three things, then you should be good with not having to worry about using your references incorrectly. Once you have your first and worst and sketch done, you can just mosey on to your character design. It's gonna be faster, better, look cooler, be awesomer, all of your hopes and dreams for your character because you decided to pre-game like you gotta stick up your butt for your character. And that's what you gotta do, baby. But the real question is what happens when you finish your character design and you don't know what colors to pick that won't ruin all the hard work you just put in? 
So watch this next video so that you don't pick the wrong colors.